Good evening, everyone, and welcome. And uh, welcome to the Seneca County Board of Supervisors regular June meeting. Margaret, uh, roll call, please. Supervisor Reynolds. Here. Supervisor Garlic Lauren Betty. Here. Supervisor Brownell. Here. Supervisor Davidson. Here. Supervisor Prouty. Here. Supervisor Kaiser. Present. Supervisor Lazaro. Present. Supervisor Cronenwetter. Here. Supervisor Lott. Here. Supervisor McGreevy. Here. Supervisor Heisen. Present. Supervisor Trout. Here. Supervisor Shipley. Here. Supervisor Hockadell. Here. You have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, first order of business tonight is the uh, quarter, quarterly report from our TPA, the Seneca County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Jeff and Rick, good morning guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Actually, Good evening, too. Depends on where you are. I think it's morning sometime in Singapore. Uh, well, hello. We will. Uh, we do have a little presentation uh, in in store for you tonight as well. Uh, but before that, I just wanted to introduce uh, myself, Jeff Shipley. I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce, which is the county's tourism promotion agency. I have with me Rick Newman, who is our destination marketing manager. He handles tourism on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So the two of us are going to go through. Uh, in brief fashion, the report that all of you have received, it's on your desk, it's that color sheet, two-page uh, report. I'll walk you through, as I always do, this is the first quarter and second quarter report. We're combining the two tonight. Uh, as you all, most of you are aware, we come before this board on a quarterly basis to uh, talk about uh, the tourism program, how we're spending the money, and some of the initiatives that we have going on. So that's what I'm here to do. I'll start uh, with uh, the front page of that report, which has an executive summary uh, on that uh, first uh, column. I'm very proud, uh, we're very proud of the growth in the local tourism industry over the past several years. As indicated in your report, and I think it's important to, uh, to point out to you, Seneca County is just one of six counties uh, in the region that can say they've had positive vis visitor spending growth every year since 2012. That is uh, uh, really remarkable, particularly since uh, some of the larger communities, larger counties uh, can't say the same. So we're very proud of that fact. Most of the stats, I will uh, just uh, also preface this by saying most of the stats are from two, uh, 2016, is the last year that we have. Uh, they uh, routinely get updated by the state, but they have not been uh, since the end of 2016, so we're still waiting on the 17 numbers. For your reasons, purposes, that does not include the impact that Del Lago Resort and Casino has had. So that, keep that in mind, because that's a very big nugget. So the rest of that uh, executive summary, tourism is a very important industry to New York State. As you have in front of you, it's a $65 billion industry in the state. It makes it one of the state's largest economic engines. Uh, also noted in your report is the fact that the Finger Lakes region accounts for the second largest amount of visitor spending in the state when you take out New York City and Long Island. Uh, Finger Lakes is a very, very important tourism area for the state of New York, and Seneca County is a very important area for tourism, as all of you well know. It's a vitally important industry to our uh, community, to economic development efforts. It accounts for more than $60 million in direct spending in this community, and with Del Lago, 
uh, nearly 2,500 jobs. So very significant statistics uh, for you on uh, tourism's impact in this community. The budget, moving down to the budget, you have our full and complete uh, numbers accounting uh, on that report. As you can see, that budget consists of funding from the state matching funds program. It's a state grant of which the county matches that amount. This year it was $65,000 and change. We do not have that money. We just got it tonight, actually. John, uh, County Manager John Shepard gave it to me tonight. So we do have that money. That will be added. But uh, the rest of that funds uh, that we've received to date is part of the tourism contract that we have with the county. So you can see the uh, expenditures related to the monies that we have taken in to, the, to date. Uh, our expenses uh, through June uh, represents a very fiscally responsible budget that places a premium on maximizing our return on investment. Uh, I just uh, wanted to highlight a couple of the major program funding areas this year. Uh, first and foremost, the production of our annual county visitor guide, which all of you have on your uh, desk as well as on your place setting. Uh, distribution outlets for getting that guide into the hands of uh, the people that want it, our visitors. Advertising, both print and digital, maintaining our county information centers, uh, the innovative use of technology, which you will have a quick demonstration presentation following this, and a major update to our county's travel website. That are those are all the major program areas that we're spending the uh, county occupancy tax dollars on. Also, with respect to the occupancy tax, uh, you have a chart at the very bottom of that report that shows that the proceeds from the occupancy tax fund have been steadily increasing over the past few years and we certainly expect that trend to continue obviously with the addition of Del Lago uh, Casino. And I'm just going to briefly go over on the back side of your report, uh, go through some of the visitor tracking. Our office tracks visitors uh, as much as we can. We track as much data as we can. It helps us with our marketing efforts and putting the dollars where they uh, make the most uh, impact. And so the visitor origin in terms of where visitors to Seneca County are coming from, probably no surprise to most of you, but the majority come from other parts of New York State within the drive radius of us, so within a, a, a five, three to five hour radius for the most part. Um, and uh, there, there, there was one on there, uh, as you can see, Russia. Russia accounted for a sizable uh, faction of visitors to Seneca County. That was actually in April. Uh, they're uh, either getting an early start on the election cycle, or uh, they were they were actually coming from. It was a motor coach tour that uh, detoured into Seneca County uh, from uh, from New York City on its way to Niagara Falls. So they detoured Seneca County uh, and went to the outlet mall. So it was a pretty, as you can see, it, I mean, it accounted for a pretty significant portion of traffic this quarter, but that was back in April. Uh, the reason for the visit, the most popular reasons for uh, the visit during these two quarters were shopping, food and dining, and the casino. And keep in mind, this quarter, for the most part, quarter one was in the winter months, and we tend to see a, a reduction in wine traffic in the winter months. I would expect, based on historical data, that we're going to see the wine uh, industry be, be added to that major uh, category for most popular reason. Uh, uh, for their visit. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rick to finish up the report, and then we're going to take, uh, take a brief uh, tour of a new technology that we're uh, working on. Good evening, uh, or good morning, whatever you prefer. Um, as Jeff mentioned, I'm the uh, Destination Marketing Manager for the Seneca County Chamber of Commerce, Rick Newman. Um, thank you for allowing us to come before you tonight. Um, I wanted to start at the front of the uh, report that we gave you. Um, as you can see on the right-hand side, we have uh, our notable promotional campaigns that we run every year. Um, you can see that we place ads in traditional print materials, which are, are listed right there, but we also use multiple uh, digital opportunities to better target a particular market to uh, help our advertising. Um, of these means of advertising, um, we present two pretty common themes to them. 
Um, one uh, is position, positioning ourselves as the gateway to the Finger Lakes, especially with the addition of Del Lago coming to uh, the northern portion of the Thruway Exit 41, um, northern gateway into the rest of the Finger Lakes where we can then disperse our visitors to everything else that we have to offer. Um, and second theme that we, uh, that we carry throughout our, our uh, promotional campaigns is conveying experiences unique to Seneca County. Um, for example, the travel guide in front of you, the faces and stories of the tourism professionals and all the unique properties that we have to offer here um, is, is really a big theme for us. Um, we also choose niche marketing uh, to, again, target specific markets, um, such as you can see the campground owners of New York. Uh, we place an advertisement both digitally and print um, with them, but we also uh, travel into niche markets such as the Haunted, Haunted History Trail of New York State, which has just um, increased tremendously over the past couple of years since its creation, and um, other niche markets such as bird watching or um, outdoor recreational cycling um, uh, niches of that sort. If we move to the back, um, I want to finish the rest of uh, the report for you. Um, we'll start with the uh, public relations and earned media impressions. Um, I just want to say that Earned Media Impressions has a price tag larger than what pretty much everyone's budget cannot, um, cannot withstand to, to do on their own. Uh, we work with a regional public relations firm through the Finger Lakes Regional Tourism Council, which I'm a sitting board member on the, on the organization, where we work with our public relations firm to, uh, to pitch story ideas to these large media publications. And as you can see under the uh, PR efforts, these are just just a few of the ones that we have uh, that we have had properties listed in. Um, there are many, many more. Um, we've actually last year produced over three billion impressions um, in terms of, of uh, earned media. And you can see, um, you know, certainly celebrating Women's History, um, especially March being Women's History Month, that was a very big month for us, and also a very big um, pitching effort for us throughout the entire year, um, as a matter of fact. But certainly, that was a, a big target for the month, uh, month of March. Um, craft beverage industry, obviously, a big portion of why uh, visitors come to visit our particular area. Um, you can see the Finger Lake Cider House down in Inner Lake in New York. Um, beautiful property, um, just uh, placed in there for USA Today. And again, uh, another reason why a lot of visitors come is the rich history that we have. Uh, obviously, you know, this, the woman's history is, is located in there, but you also have the other, uh, other museums, Wonderful Life, um, Waterways and Industry, and the uh, Historical Society. Moving down to the major uh, initiatives and event collaboration um, and attraction, Empire Prime Days. Obviously, it's going to be here before we know it. So we uh, we are actually partnering with the show management again this year to coordinate a vendor appreciation reception. Received very well last year, so we hope to see that grow uh, at least double this year. Um, and for those of you who don't know, it is the largest outdoor agricultural trade show in the Northeast. So we're uh, looking forward to that. The uh, Corning Museum of uh, Glass Large, um, they were here last year during uh, during Canal Fest in Seneca Falls. Um, we convinced them to come back again on their statewide tour. Um, so we uh, they're making a future stop again this uh, Labor Day weekend this year. So we're looking forward to that as well. And uh, something new that we're doing for the first time is uh, partnering with Fishing League Worldwide to host a college bass fishing tournament, uh, which we are collaborating with that organization to help bring an estimated 150 anglers with their families, friends, and college support teams to the community for a uh, uh, fishing tournament in, later in July. Um, and then moving down to the major initiatives and the visitor resources, again, we've touched on it a couple of times, but that magazine right in front of you, the official uh, county travel guide, um, we've got a, a new cover, new, uh, new imagery, property content, and uh, map additions. Um, one of the, you know, the biggest things with that that we contracted, you saw in, in the budget since, uh, since the beginning of the year, is that we distribute approximately 110,000 copies of, uh, of those travel guides to um, various contract vendors throughout the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic. And one of the biggest things that we are very proud to, uh, to mention um, as of uh, this year with this new guide is that we are working with the Quality Inn, the Hampton Inn, multiple bed and breakfasts that have these guides in every single room for the visitor um, staying overnight to use as a resource. Um, we are encouraging them to take those copies um, and bring them back with them so they know, um, they know what they can experience when they come here next time. 
Um, and uh, the website redevelopment that we, that we spoke about earlier um, is the top priority, uh, top program priority for 2018 as identified the, by the Tourism Committee at the Chamber of Commerce, the Seneca County Advisory Committee on Tourism, which is the County Tourism uh, Advisory Committee, and is, uh, follows in our TPA marketing plan. Um, with that, uh, the other initiative we have for you uh, on the report is a visitor kiosk, which we will um, now go ahead and give you a demonstration for. And um, I'll have Jeff uh, on the mic while I'm navigating through the software. So, do you need to use the uh, uh, we screen? Do. We do. Yes. Yes. Well, while they're getting that set up, is there, can I answer any questions? Does anyone have any questions about the report, any of the information that you heard? Yes, sir. Did you drop any of these off at Trader Village? <laughs> we did, actually. Yes, we did. I, one case or two, uh, Rick, Rick did that uh, not too long ago. So, yes, they have that. I, I understand that they've been in front of this board a couple times. So, yes, we, we did receive the information and we dropped it off. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Can I clarify that? <laughs> it uh, wasn't Trader Village. It was somebody that rents his space. Correct. Trader Correct. Yes. Yep. Absolutely correct. It's an antique store, I believe. Right. Uh, antique store. Yes. yes. Jeff, I have a quick question. The uh, the governor was here in the Finger Lakes two weeks ago to uh, to open his new visitor center in Geneva. Is we were there. that new visitor center in Geneva get interface with any of the Chamber of Commerce, or how is that going to help? Uh, expand tourism visitation to our county. Uh, so the visitor center kind of teed me up on that one. The visitor center in uh, Geneva is the is the New York State Welcome Center uh, that they have uh, launched. Um, it's a very nice facility, uh, the best that ten million dollars can buy, I think today. Um, we went. We Rick and I were part of the opening of that facility. Um, I will say this. Governor Cuomo has certainly put a lot of investment into tourism uh, over his administration, and we are very happy at uh, a lot of the initiatives that he has uh, installed. This particular initiative, the Welcome Centers, it's not just the one in the Finger Lakes, it's the one in all, there, there's one in every region uh, of uh, the economic development zones. Uh, we would certainly like to see, uh, like to be able to say that there is a lot of representation for Seneca County and uh, for that matter any county in the Finger Lakes region. It's just not the case. Uh, the, the policy of those welcome centers is such that they are not accepting any brochures of any kind. So that visitor guide, along with any other county visitor guide, is not part, you will not find that in those welcome centers. What you will find is electronic kiosks, similar to what we're about to show you. Um, however, we feel our, our kiosk is a little bit more user-friendly for the visitor because it relies on a map and, and map technology. Uh, theirs is more uh, of an app, and you can download this app off of uh, the App Store and anywhere else you get an app these days. It's the I Love New York app. Their kiosks are pretty much operating on those apps. So you have to know where you are, what you're looking for, uh, what the name of the place is that you're looking for in order to really effectively use that. So I hope, I'm, I'm hopeful, we are certainly working with our regional partners, our regional council, to uh, suggest changes that make those welcome centers more uh, user friendly for the visitors and help disperse that traffic throughout the region, especially to Seneca County. Um, it's so new that we don't have a whole lot of data on the traffic coming to those visitor centers, but um, I, I think it's a work in progress. Stay tuned. And, you know, certainly it, it has not included some of the things that we would have liked to have seen, nor um, are, are we uh, certainly. Uh, uh, enthused that the New York Kitchen is really the ones that are running that facility because uh, I don't know how much knowledge they have of Seneca County. So that's something, for example, that we've worked through our regional partners to suggest to the state that we uh, be involved, the TPAs be involved in the education process that goes along with the volunteers that staff those centers. Excuse me, I would have to say that I was present at that welcoming, and there is Tommy um, Murray's Miranda Cheese was was there, there in a, one of the uh, coolers, 
and there was also Cuba Lake Creamery ice cream. So they are trying to incorporate some of Seneca County. Well, that's good news. Yep, they were right there. Hey, Rick, a uh, follow-up question. You mentioned the travel guide is in a few of the local hotels. They they put it in the rooms. What about uh, Del Lago, the hotel at Del Lago? We are uh, beginning talks with them to have them join that collaboration. Correct. In the community, you know, get, to get the word out there. We are having talks with them. So we're, uh, we're trying to get the, the kiosk taken care of right now, get that all situated, and then that will be next on the Do they just have one kiosk out there? Correct. Anybody, any other questions? If not, we'll move to the, uh, Margaret, you want to put the screen down? Thank you. Okay, so we're going to walk you through. We're really excited uh, to give you a quick demonstration of, of this technology. We're really excited about it. We've been developing it for the better part of a year now, working. At, this started, uh, as you heard, with a partnership with Del Lago to create really an interactive tourism experience, a kiosk for use at the casino to direct guests to other tourism properties throughout the community. So we have since added on to that scope uh, beyond Del Lago and really are in the final stages of adapting this technology for use with tablets. And so what you see Rick on right now is an iPad. And our hope is to have uh, several of these iPads deployed throughout the community, throughout Seneca County, as a way of having a mobile visitor information center. So this is a way that we can take it and adapt that technology, take it to uh, other properties in our tourism uh, community uh, that are in maybe some remote locations and they can uh, serve as a de facto tourism information center all they need is a wi-fi connection so the first thing that uh, we're going to show you is when the uh, when you first launch the kiosk it incorporates some basic visitor tracking to help us refine our marketing target so you can see it's a tap here to start and it asks for a zip code and so as rick enters in the zip code um, it's, a, it's a way for us to figure out where people are coming from. You saw some of the stats earlier. Once they get into it, there's some other uh, tracking features throughout the uh, site. Uh, basically, every page is tracked, every property that's clicked on is tracked, so we know where they're going, what interests they have. And then uh, beyond that, we're also tracking emails because there's a feature, as you'll see later on, that allows people to send directions to a property right uh, to their phone or mobile device or email address. And so we're able to build a database from likely repeat visitors to our community. So as I mentioned, this whole platform is based off of a Google map. That's really a, a probably the foremost uh, map technology that everyone is familiar with probably the most. So it operates much similar to a uh, kiosk at a mall. So where are you, know, you are here type of technology. So this one is uh, showing you at Del Lago Casino, uh, is, is up on the screen to show you that's where you are. Every property that ha is highlighted that comes up will, uh, will produce a pin, uh, a locator pin on this. So I'm gonna ask Rick to go in and select a category. Rick, really, you have categories down the right side the basic premise is users would select a category that interests them, uh, agritourism, craft beverage, food and dining, history, so forth on the right side. I'm going to ask Rick to go ahead and select agritourism, which is among the fastest growing niche sectors in uh, the Seneca County tourism community, and then go ahead and click on Miranda Cheese. Uh, for example, I heard that one earlier. So Miranda Cheese comes up, you see all the other ones go away, and you see exactly where Miranda Cheese is located with that bouncing pin right there to show you it's just outside of, uh, uh, just off of 96. And now you have an option to either click on that pin or Rick, go ahead and click on the details. Uh, there's a red detail button. Up pops some more information about Miranda Cheese. It gives you their address, it gives you their phone number, it gives you a description on Miranda Cheese. It's populated with whatever folks photos or images that we have in there. Um, and at the very bottom, it's cutting off a little bit on the screen, over there, send me directions. And that's what I was talking about. If, if the user clicks on send me directions, up will pop a screen that asks for your email address. You type in your email address 
and you will receive a prompt reply that gives you detailed directions to that particular property. Uh, so that is basically how this works. There's also a rating system. You can see the stars. Those are users that have uh, entered in similar to an Amazon review or a Yelp review. It's just sort of an, a, a way to, to uh, uh, get people's interaction going on this site. So that's how it goes. Uh, that's basically the premise of how it works. Rick, why don't we go ahead and, and uh, navigate to another one. How about the, uh, the Seneca White Deer at the wildlife uh, facility? So Rick's going to go back, select another category, click on wildlife. You see the, the Seneca White Deer bouncing pin to show you where the white deer are located. Up pops this description box with uh, a description, the pictures that we have, uh, and then the send me direction. So it's all meant to focus the user uh, on an accessible, uh, identifiable place near where they are in some cases or, or where they're going to be so they can plan out their trip. And you can pick multiple ones and send multiple directions if you wanted to do that as well. Has every category that is uh, covered in our tourism mix. The last thing that I'm gonna ask Rick to do is the kiosk also allows you if, you, if you didn't want that and you wanted a little bit more down and dirty information, you wanted to get access our travel guide, our travel guide is on there as well. And so Rick just clicked on the last one, it brings up the screen, although the, I think the screen is gonna cut off where Rick is gonna go. Under the bottom is the pages, the, the page content. You'd see this on the screen if you were actually on the kiosk. Um, but all of our travel guide in its entire electronic electronic form is also on that uh, particular platform. So users have multiple uh, areas, uh, ways to access information. There is a very comprehensive list uh, up there, as you can see, all of our all of our properties are added into the system. The, pro the property owners themselves have the ability to update uh, that information uh, right now. They can log into our system uh, at the chamber and update their complete description, they can give us hours, whatever they want to put up there, they can update. Uh, and uh, that's how uh, we, we have to physically uh, input it right now, but once our new uh, website technology is up and running, uh, it will be real time uh, that the property owners can input their own information. So that was a really quick uh, down and dirty uh, example of what we've been working on, the, uh, the kiosk technology. We, this has been uh, featured at the regional level uh, multiple counties are looking at the same technology that we have right now. We're the first uh, and we're very happy to be the first. We think there's a lot of potential in, in this technology and, and certainly as we're seeing with more and more places getting away from a printed brochure. I will tell you that comes with a, a caveat because this area particularly this area still uh, gravitates towards printed materials. And uh, we don't see that going away anytime in the near future, but we will probably be putting uh, more of an emphasis on digital as we move into the future. But that, uh, that being the case, we, we really think this makes uh, access to information much more uh, feasible and, and hopefully the more we can continue to uh, make this information accessible, the more we can grow the important industry. So, does anyone have any questions uh, for me or Rick on this technology? Yes. And this is a TPA funded? This is TPA funded, correct. Anybody in the county can go on and get on the app. The tourism property, yeah. So like Trader, Trader's Village, are, are they on that? I don't. Craft beverage. I uh, there last night, Saturday afternoon, but he said he's not a member of the chamber, so my question now is, how would he get on? There's a lot of members that are, there's a lot of properties out there that are not members of the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. You don't you don't have to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce, just like you don't have to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce for our uh, for our uh, publication or our website. Um, this isn't complete. We haven't launched this yet, so uh, I don't know if they're there. Rick, did you find them by any chance there? No, but we're still updating it. Yeah, we're still updating it. But you can see the database that we have. I can assure you those are not all chamber members. Uh, I, I have a lot bigger salary if all of those businesses were chamber members. We have a lot more money for chamber Any other questions? Yes. This, this is probably a stupid question, but the map itself, yes. only group 96 is highlighted. How come 414? 96A, 89, right? It looks almost like if you were walking to Glen. So if you zoom in, those roads will come in. It's, it's the Google map technology. Okay. 
Um, it's basically if you pull up your smartphone and, and go to a Google map, it's the same map. So the, the more you scroll out, the fewer roads come. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have control of the. But if you if you were to scroll, if you were to just scroll, 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 then most people bring GPS anyhow. You want to take them there? Yeah. You're you're going to get those roads. Those secondary roads will be on there for sure. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. So tourism budget, salaries and benefits. Am I reading this wrong? It's only sixty six thousand eight twenty one. I know you guys have like four people on staff. We have five actually. Five. So and we all split the <coughs> four out of five. Split that money. So we're about 46% salaries, benefits in terms of what we bring in, which is uh, a really healthy ratio when it comes to a... So four people split 66,000? That's year to date, supervisor. Okay. But yes, that's correct. Okay, just through here. Half a year. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Nice job. Thank, Thank you. you. Is uh, we have uh, Don Len Linmore, president of the Samson Veterans Memorial Cemetery Association. Don, uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Chairman Shipley, uh, Manager Shepard, and uh, for relief for making this appointment uh, to address you. And I'd like to thank the, the board itself. Uh, basically, <coughs> our I've been on, a lot of you know me, I've been around here for about 10, 12 years to, uh, from the beginning of uh, working on Samson with Senator uh, Zolio. And uh, I, I lived up in this place for many years. Anyhow, uh, my concern is things already get done out there and there's money that may disappear. Uh, I was talking to uh, Senator Helmut and she said uh, the way things are going right now, money that's available to, to uh, Samson. If the, they lose a the majority in November, that this money will disappear. Right now we got $900,000 that we can use on almost anything in general at, at the cemetery. And we got $2 million to be used at the firehouse, which is the small season uh, determinant center. And that is being used for storage right now, and you can't even walk in it. Uh, it has bathrooms, uh, and not too much else. Uh, I'll skip. Uh, skip is uh, our vice president. He works at, at his work in that building. And basically, uh, what, what we're looking at is to get something going. It has to be done right now. If we don't get things going, the money's going to disappear and it's going to be wasted and probably never see it again. So what I, Mike, I just want to uh, post, I'll read what you got in front of you basically. Uh, memo and no improvements have been made to the All Season Tournament Center, also known as the Firehouse. The original plans call for the completion of the exterior and interior of the building. Since then, the exterior was refurbished and in a respectable measure. The interior was cleaned up, the walls were moved to install uh, the restrooms. No attempt to complete the internal memorial service area has been made. The original plan called for seven stained glass windows that would represent the five branches of the armed forces plus World War II Merchant Marine 
and these six would be installed in the rear windows. The seventh would be the current Samson Memorial. And this is uh, attached. This is what it an army rendition of what we had proposed. And you won't have that in front of you. It's got the seal of Seneca, not anything else, so you know it's an official document. Uh, what I'd like to mention is uh, we, the association, we're authorized to do fundraisers for different projects on the cemetery. And one of the projects we had was this, uh, the stained glass windows. As it turns out, uh, we, we've got probably close to two thirds of what we need to pay for them. But we've been told if the program goes ahead with with the two million dollars, they can use that to put the stained glass windows in. And uh, the money that we've accomplished, uh, you know, uh, approved, uh, approved it, uh, we can use it for something else. But we'd like to uh, ensure that those stained glass windows in. We we collected money. The people that donated. We're assured that they, there's a plaque that's going up on the wall with different people's donation and who it's dedic dedicated to. And that was, those plaques have to be put up in that firehouse. And uh, until all that's done, then we can decide what we want to do with the, the money that was intended for the stained glass windows. And uh, other than that, we have to. As you can see in the proposal, uh, so for many years, grant money has been available to update the, the all season tournament center, but nothing has been done. Well, at present, two million dollars available, and nine hundred thousand is available for the for, for the cemetery in general. And basically, we'd like to see that happen, and it's got to be done very shortly. Uh, otherwise, we, we don't get it started. The money needs to be, uh, you know, designated for before November. And I, I would like, I don't know what we can do about getting a, a group together, the planning board or whatever. I'm, I'm willing to be involved with anything you guys want to do. Uh, but we got to get this going. Uh, the other thing is, we're looking to get this thing, I, I gave uh, Chairman Shipley uh, some of the documents that I collected through the years about Senator Mazzolio and then uh, uh, some of the other, I think it was, it was a couple of uh, assembly bills and a couple of uh, Senate bills that in Albany that uh, address the cemetery, trying to make it a, a state cemetery. As it stands right now, is a little known item on the again to say income tax that if you click it you can donate to veterans funding it doesn't say nothing about the cemetery but it's intended that money is intended for the cemetery and right now Senator Zolio at the time told us we're going to need six million dollars in order to set up a uh, a fund to draw from the interest and everything else to keep it going uh, right now, I think after about three or four years of being on your income tax, well, I think we collected less than, around somewhere around a million. This very, it's going to take another 10 years, you know, so I spoke to uh, Senator Funky uh, several weeks ago at one of our conventions, and also uh, Mark Johns, who's a uh, assemblyman. And basically, what uh, Senator Funky said, how much money do you need? And I said, I was talking to the chairman before, and he said that it costs us uh, about $100,000 a year to, to maintain that with salaries and everything. I said, that should be peanuts for the state. I mean, they, they put $10 million into this uh, thing on the throughway and signs that they might have to take that. And, you know, if you think they, they could come up with it, a couple hundred thousand dollars to pay for the cemetery. Uh, as your, in your remarks, you're, I think you're almost correct on the, uh, the amount of uh, state-run cemeteries in the United States. Out of 50 states, there's five that do not have state cemeteries. And 
New York is the one of the larger ones that doesn't have it. Uh, there's seven total with the uh, some of our uh, protective uh, areas, uh, the, the islands of Guam and stuff like that. A lot of those places have them. And then our VA cemeteries. That, but we're, it's, a, it's shameful that New York State, with all the uh, resources we have, we can't get a, a veteran cemetery. And it's built right now. And we just, I don't know, I'm sick. Uh, I've, I've heard some uh, people that saying that uh, we should open it up to the public. I, I gave you the uh, chairman of the document saying that this is intended to be a veteran cemetery and not to be used for anything other than veterans and it according to the VA. But, uh, uh, guidelines. The VA guidelines has a veteran army discharge, a spouse, and under certain circumstances, uh, children or dependents. But other than that, uh, they're the only ones that should be built there, that are buried there. I, when I took on the, uh, got up to the, this project, I was asked by Senator Zolio to, uh, to, you know, commit to being buried there. And I am going to be buried there. And I want it to be a cemetery. Veteran Cemetery. I uh, want this right house finished. And uh, if I can, any questions? Anybody? Uh, Supervisor Lorenzetti. Yes, I don't know who to direct it to, but if there's been grants that are available and nobody's assisted them to write grants, how can the county step in with that? If it has to be completed before November. When does the county take over responsibility also? I think it's fine. The county owns the land, right? The, the IDA is uh, supplementing the operations to a little over 100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Two million grants have been applied for and uh, in the process of receiving toward the refurbishment of both the brig for storage and also the internment center here. And then 900,000 again is a SAM grant too that has not been definitively defined of where that 900,000 is going to go. But the grants have been, the applications have been done, have been completed? Two the, the, okay. the application is not complete for the 900,000. All of that again? You. So I can, I can. Director Hunt Henry can probably. Okay, the $2 million grant, we have received the contract last month from the state. So we are in a contract stage, and so we are now ready to proceed with reaching out to the architects and starting that process to go again. So, and there was a 200000 grant from Palmasano, which you remember that we were going to renovate the brig, and we got jammed up with MWBE goals. We could not meet those goals, so we are at the point where we are now going to um, build a new maintenance or a storage structure there, but we're currently waiting for the state to let us know that they have reappropriated those funds um, because if not, they were going to expire at the end of July. So we need, once we know they've been reappropriated, we have the ex extension paperwork already to submit. So we're waiting for the Department of State on that. We have the $2 million grant. We are waiting to decide whether or not what to do with the $900,000, which um, Bill Yale came two weeks ago and talked about some ideas to do with the $900,000 grant application. So we have that, and my understanding is that that money will be there, but we need to decide what we're going to use it for. With the $900,000? With the 900000 So, sir, my question then to you is, he came to the board and thought of a crematorium. Yes. And it, unless I'm reading this wrong, you don't feel that's a good option? Well, there are, there's, there, to me, there's an adequate amount of crematoriums in the area between uh, Syracuse and Rochester. I, I don't know what the number of them, but it seems to be adequate for what the need is. To take this, and, 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 I, and if they wanted to put a crematorium there, I really don't have a problem. 
but the intent is to make it open to the public. I don't think he. Well, that's I think down the road he wants to open this up to the public. The and crematorium. The crematorium no. could be used. Don't have to be buried there. Right. Not right. to something. Right. Exactly. He, yeah. he specifically said that that yeah. it would just be for veterans. Yeah. Crematorium, yes. You could cremate anybody's body okay, there and make well, some money off. Of it. I I wasn't here for that meeting, but the, yeah. the what I what I heard was that he uh, would eventually like to open it up to the public to, to, to fund it. So that's that's what I heard. Just to be cremated, not to be buried. Okay, well that, yeah. I, that, that I didn't know. So. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the way he approached okay. this board, trying to make yeah. trying to make the cemetery a little more self-sufficient. Yeah, well that I can see that. I, I I have no problem with the crematorium. I just I have a problem with opening to the public. Anything that's the cemetery. Needs, yes. Not and, the crematorium. Right. The crematorium they can use it for making money on the outside, but as long as they don't start allowing those uh, burials of uh, non-veterans and their families, that would irritate me. <laughs> Joe, I have one quick question for yeah. you. The the two million dollars yeah. that's been secured. Is that actual grant money, or is that money the county has to spend and then submit for reimbursement? That's it's yeah. reimbursement. Yeah. So it's not actually money in our hands. No. No. It's just a piece of paper saying that you spend the money and we'll reimburse you. Yeah. That's how we build the cemetery with grant money like that. Yeah, the county actually had to fund it. Get Seven million dollars in uh, dormitory grants. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, Supervisor Cronweiter. Maybe Jill can answer. I'm just wondering who the entity is that's going to put the RFPs out for this work. Is that the county or is that the cemetery association? Or who's in it's, charge of getting ball rolling? It's historically, it's it's the county. Yeah. In, the, in the past, it's been the planning office that has been doing that. And now with um, Sam Crane here, we'd probably be working in conjunction on something, something like that. Okay, thanks. So the county. Anybody else? Supervisor Eisen. So since we have the money, Mr. Shepard, when are we going to get started? <laughs> Seems like time is over here. Right now, everything. Yeah. <laughs> just now, at the $2 million contract. The $2 million yeah. contract just came last month. So, so the next phase is the RFP for the yeah. design and engineering construction? We would start pulling together where we stand on past designs. We've reached out to um, Thailand, who's where we have used before, so as you can see, some of the design work had previously been done, so we need to get moving on that again. Uh, revamping that and seeing what the cost figures are there. And moving forward. I think, I think uh, that's a good move right there. I think any help is uh, Senator Holmes might be able to give us, she could probably. Uh, I don't want to be needing any guidance. You guys have been doing this for years. So, uh, but uh, the other thing is down the road, if you find that the uh, the funding and the maintaining the courses in Santa County, I would love to see this thing uh, become a state cemetery. And we need, so to, we? we need to work on that. And uh, if not, all right, let it. Trumpetsy. We got it's a no-brainer. You got a, you got a 162 acres of a, 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 a veteran cemetery that's made to the order of the VA, and nobody wants it. Come on. You know? Is there any other questions from the board? Okay, Dan. Thank you very much. Thank you for your keep time. in touch. I, I will, you keep in touch. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to drop this. You know, and if I, if I be a Neither do we. Uh, Skip, do you have anything to say? No. Nope. You did your job. Thank you, Dan. Skip and his wife have been uh, real valuable for the uh, program, and I just like to acknowledge it for that. They're all over Thank you, Dan. Thank you. I want to thank you too, Dan. Okay, our uh, next presenter is uh, Robert Vernon. Robert, good evening. All right. Come to the board tonight because I came with custody of two little girls that are 9 and 10 years old. They both have IEPs, they've been sexually abused. Uh, there's no help in Seneca County for any child that has a disability. 
that has any problems at all. I get told by Love House, by Gap, by some county counseling, there's no funding. You know, no funding. What am I supposed to do with two, two children that are nine and 10 years old, I have guardianship on them, and they look at me and they say, what are we gonna do now, Robbie? We have nowhere to go. We have nobody to help us. We got some county counselor talking to them, telling them everything will be okay, everything is all right. You got the GAP program down in Central Falls. It took my 17-year-old son that was not on probation or pens, had a young man come in the house and take him off for two or three days out of the week, tell me, they're not on pens, we can't help you. I take him down to the council building, they talk to Ann down there, and they say, well, the only thing you can do is come from and give them love. I'm from the South, you can't tell them about my voice, I'm from Virginia. We had all the help we can get from that community. I lived in Binghamton, New York, had all the help in the world we can get from Broome County to help these children. I live in Seneca County now, with no help at all for no one. They go to Bloomville two months ago for the Special Olympics. I don't see anyone around here, didn't notice any faces there, did support Special Olympics in Seneca County. I got one who goes to Kelly School in Newark because she has an IAP type statement, she has ADHD. I have one that goes to Lafayette School over here that's in a special needs class on 1511. And they're both scared of human beings because they've been abused all their lives. I step up to the plate because their grandmother died of cancer because she got tired of fighting. And I look at them and I say, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna fight for you until the end. No one's gonna help. I ask for help, no one helps. But I'll sit here today, I'm asking for help. That's all I'm asking. Give me some kind of program to help these children grow up to have a good life, to not be scared of you, you, anyone in this room. They can come to you and say, excuse me, ma'am, can you help me down the street? Sure, I'll help you. Instead of run away from you. Because that's what they did to the doctor the other day when she had a problem. They went to the doctor to touch her because she was scared. So I'm asking for help, not only for my two children, but for anybody else that's got children with special needs. That's what I'm asking for. I get told no funding. Seneca County has no funding for children with special needs. I talked to Stacy Hawes over at Love House, which they're involved with, and I say, is there anything else we can do for them? Nope, there's no funding. I talked to DHS downstairs on the second floor. Is there any help that we can help these two children with? Nope, there's no funding. Where's the funding? Delago's got it all. Yeah, because they don't get funding. They got it the, on TV all day long. You get Del Lago commercials. Well, they pay for that themselves. Well, we don't fund them. Then you get funding for you know other things. You can put stuff. Uh, Homos got the sign going up and down your Stewart State Thruway, millions of dollars. It could have been put towards children with special needs. See it all day long. I live on Clark Street down here in Waterloo. I was told by Linda Rapini that used to work at the VA home right on the corner of Clark and 5 and 20. That a gentleman come out of that home one day to walk across the street to the snow cone and got hit. That's the only reason why y'all put stops, y'all put pedestrian signs up. I have a 17 year old son that walked across the street the other day and got hit by a truck. But one did nothing about it. Called the state. Can you put signs, crosswalk signs up? No, nope, you have to take a picture and send it to us. Took a picture and sent it to him. Nothing, never done. How long did you have to wait? For about six months. Before they even got a hold of me, emailed or called me. Tell me they couldn't do anything. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I will ask our uh, human services uh, chair and vice chair, uh, uh, Supervisor McGreevy and Supervisor Lazaro that uh, take a look at this situation, see if there's anything we can do to help this gentleman. I mean, not only for myself, okay. for any child. I mean, if you've got grandchildren, if you've got grandchildren that have special needs, anyone, not just for myself, anybody, any child that needs the help. Supervisor Kaiser, do you have a question, Dave? Yeah, a question comment, I suppose, Mr. Shipley. I think the human services people need to give us a report of what we do offer, don't offer, if there's a lack of funding, why and where the funding is not being uh, put forth. Mm -hmm. I think we need to understand this a little better ourselves. 
Great. We'll we'll ask them to uh, dig in a little bit and see what they can find out. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you for coming forward. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have uh, open privilege of the floor. Is there anybody that would like to address the board tonight? Yes, ma'am, come forward and uh, state your name and where you live, please. Good evening, I am Linda Zwick. I'm councilwoman for the town of Fayette. Um, I live in the village of Waterloo, but in the town of Fayette. Um, tonight, I'm coming forward for uh, the issue we have with Yellow Tavern Road and West River Road. Um, these uh, two roads are parallel roads and main roads who are going through the town of Fayette. And right now, they are closed at the same time to repair bridges. That is definitely an issue in itself, but no notice was ever given prior to the closings to our highway department, the town hall, our supervisor, or every member of the town board. We found out from a resident who was a firefighter the day of the closing. He said the fire service had just been notified that Yellow Tavern Road was going to close that day. It was also the day that the signs were put up. Also, no prior notification. Yellow Tavern Road is used heavily for trucks going from 96A to Seneca Stone, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Advanced notification would have allowed them to adjust their routes to Seneca Stone. To make matters worse, the detour signs suggest using Allen Road and Post Road. Well, both of these roads are narrow town roads that cannot support those trucks or additional traffic. Especially on Allen Road, there's a very narrow, very narrow bridge that definitely cannot support any weight of any trucks. Our highway department should have been advised and included in this process. Luckily, it only took a day for these trucks to realize the detour was not acceptable and they've on their own found their alternate routes. Timing of these closures, Yellow Tavern Road and West River Road were also not well thought out. With only two weeks left of school, Waterloo School District needs to reroute all of their buses. This is an unnecessary burden on them. I cannot think of a good reason why these closures could not have waited. And by the way, on Yellow Tavern Road, it closed last Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, there was nobody there working. West River Road was closed uh, today and is closed until July 9th another timing that was not well thought out. With July 4th holiday and our tourists, and we're big on tourists, using this road to access the marina in Seneca Lake, it again creates an un unnecessary burden. Both of these roads are used extensively to travel from lake to lake and to our wineries and breweries who uh, bring in an awful lot of money into Seneca County. If the town had been notified in advance, we could have existed in notifying our residents. And we put it on our website as soon as we, were, uh, we realized what was going on. I also feel it was irresponsible on the part of the county to exclude the town of Faya without advanced knowledge of these closings. Going forward, common courtesy to your towns in the county is critical. In Faya, we feel our residents come first. I would hope the county will feel the same about working with the towns. And I thank you. Thank you, Linda. We'll pass that along to the highway department and and we'll try and do better in the future. Actually, it wasn't a great department. So I just want to clarify that. He wasn't made aware of it either. Mm -hmm. It was um, public works. Because Roy was the first one that I called and he had done knowledge. Sure. Uh, Sunday, could you explain that? Public Works. That would be your Public Works Director, Mr. Fram. Well, that, that highway right. department falls under that umbrella. Except for Roy wasn't part of the, correct? That's what I was told. Roy had we no had, idea. Uh, we had the, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, we had, we had a meeting and we talked about the closures and I don't think it was, uh, we hadn't got a clear schedule from the contractor, and uh, I think we have a RE that's uh, not on top of things. He should have been on top of this as well, and uh, we were in the dark as well. That, so, but Was this DOT funded uh, bridge work? Yes, yes, it is. It's work that has to be done by November. So, but we've rectified it, and we're getting the warnings out earlier, and making sure people know what's happening. 
No, okay. it, actually, when Roy closed East Lake Road, which was huge, last summer, he had signed up two weeks prior to closings, and um, the route, the detour routes were planned and figured out, and it was a good process, and it worked well. Everybody knows nobody wants to get a detour, but again, I think Linda summed it up. We weren't included. Um, it was a short window of time that we knew before the roads closed, and both those roads are pretty major. They're heavily trafficked roads, so there you go. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Heisset, who bid out this work? The state bid out the work or did the county? Uh, Sam, can you uh, it's, can you enlighten that? It's uh, money we apply for through the state and then we bid it out. So we're responsible for the contractor, not the state. That is correct. It's our, it's our problem because we're hiring the contractor. And who does the inspection? That's uh, that would be B and L. They have their uh, resident. Just part outside. of the contract. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Moving on. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, address this board? Well, you want to address the board? Yes. Yeah, this is just the town of Payette. Town of Alden's in there too. On some roads that aren't posted until the last minute. The school buses didn't know about it until they drove down the road to the bridge and had to turn around. <laughs> so the school wasn't notified. Where the town is that? Well, sounds like we need to uh, come up with a better SOP to uh, avoid this kind of thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, if there's nobody else, uh, I'll move forward with the approval of the meeting minutes. So move. Second. Which meeting is this? Sorry, it put in, um, May 8th and May 22nd special meeting. Oh. It was sent all of them. 5-8 and 5-22nd? Okay. Yes. Is there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Uh, if not, uh, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Uh, against? That motion's approved. Uh, reports of standing committees. First, I'll call on Supervisor McGreevy, Health and Human Services. Hot topic tonight. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Health and Human Services Committee met on May 22nd. In addition to approving the resolutions included on tonight's agenda under Health and Human Services, the committee authorized refilling a position for the Director of Veteran Services Agency, Director O'Connors, will be retiring at the end of this month. We also authorized refilling a position for a full-time psychiatric nurse in the mental health department. On the agenda, item number 26, under Health and Human Services, is a resolution to create a new position for an addictions counselor. When the time is appropriate, I will be seeking an amendment to the resolution to add the funding source information for the new position. Finally, Foodlink is providing a curbside market at the HSS building one day a week during the summer. The first date is Monday, June 11th at the Office for the Aging between noon and 1.30 p.m. And there are flyers on the agenda table for more information. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ren. Uh, next, Supervisor Davidson, Human Resources and Government Operations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's two items that are going to be on the agenda tonight. Uh, one is to make an uh, exception to the mileage reimbursement policy, and the other is to uh, <laughs> annual resolution waiving the local law requiring for him uh, for Empire Farm Bureau. This year, the date is August 7th, 8th, and 9th. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Next, uh, Supervisor Kaiser, Economic Development and Tourism. Thank you, Mr. Shipley. Um, at the Economic Development and Tourism Committee meeting last month, we met with b and uh, and the uh, engineers provided a PowerPoint presentation of the 318 Corridor Sewer Improvements District and prepare and uh, propose operation with intermunicipal agreements with Tyre and Seneca Falls in place. The project is set to be online and operating by 
September of this year. Uh, and also, Bill Yale, uh, Director of Samson Veterans Memorial Cemetery, met with the committee. Uh, we discussed the idea of providing cremation services to the cemetery, for the cemetery. Uh, statistics show that baby boomers are asking more and more for cremation. Uh, this is still in the idea stage and funding still needs to be identified in order to proceed forward with that idea. Uh, there may be a uh, JASNY or DASNY uh, grant money for, for $900,000 is a possibility. And uh, uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Dave. Next, uh, Supervisor Heisen, uh, do you have an Indian Affairs report? Yes, we had a short meeting and uh, we discussed the letter that Senator Helming sent to uh, Mr. Mayberry of the BIA regarding our Cuban Indians trust renewal application. We were informed that Mark Lincoln has been, has been appointed the Chief of the Tribal Police. And we discussed the Supreme Court ruling in the, from the Washington State Supreme Court that then were sent back to another court. Uh, kind of complicated case there for a little bit of land, but maybe next meeting of the committee meeting we'll have a, our attorney then Brian to, to explain that to us. But hopefully. I think that would be very appropriate. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Next, Supervisor Brunel, Public Safety and Criminal Justice. Yes, Mr. Chairman, at the Public Safety Committee meeting in May, we approved the resolution number 18 on the agenda. We also approved a resolution to submit the application for Homeland Security Public Safety and Training Point Operations Grant. The Board of Supervisors met the same night for a special board meeting to adopt the resolution because the deadline was June 8th. That's all I have. Thank you, Ernie. Next, uh, Supervisor Cronwater, Agriculture and Environmental Affairs. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We met uh, May 22nd. We talked about the fair rubbish removal business going out of uh, going out of business and bankruptcy, and uh, dealing with the complaints and the Seneca County Code Enforcement blocked out the parking lot to prevent people from throwing their garbage there. That's uh, in the Solvay Bank's hands right now. And, uh, can we get an update on that, uh, Sam or, or John? Uh, I believe that the uh, site has been cleaned up and all the garbage has been hauled away. Is that correct? That is what I understand, yes. It looks a lot better. I drove by yesterday. It smells well, better. The local <laughs> residents tell me the smell is gone, so that's, that's very good. Now we talked about the, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts building, the old Dunkin' Donuts building. Uh, we were informed that it's just been bought at the auction, so hopefully we'll see it clean up and some activity there. And there, there's no action being taken. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Supervisor Trump, Public Works. Um, outside of the re resolutions that will follow, um, we approved refilling two positions for temporary seasonal mower at the highway department. Um, we accepted recommendation from the county manager to contract with Troy and Banks, utility and telecommunication consultants to perform a utility billing audit to determine proper billing over a six peer year period. There's no expense on the part of the county. They get paid on a percentage of what they find during their audit. Um, the Three Bears construction bids for the sidewalks and back work came in at $100,000 higher than we expected. Um, the committee has requested new costs based on changes to the original plan. So we asked them to split that up and come back to us and uh, dissect the numbers and see what project we want to do. And then uh, there was discussion on Water District 1 Spring Meadows. A late billing complaint. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next, Supervisor Reynolds, Ways and Means. <laughs> Ways and Means Committee is currently reviewing the draft policy for information technology. We plan to review it again in two weeks and send it to the Board of Supervisors in the July meeting. That's all we've been working on. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Mike. Next is uh, Chairman's remarks. I have a, a couple brief comments tonight. 
Uh, I want to uh, recognize Senator Chuck Schumer for coming to Seneca County on May 25th to stand alongside local representatives at Ventosa Winery in opposition to the proposed traction incinerator to be located near the Romulus High School. The more important message to our Albany representatives must be any decision to place a trash burning incinerator in the heart of the Finger Lakes should be a home rule decision made by the local town board members who answer directly to the local families affected. This highly profound environmental issue should not be allowed to be decided by any politically appointed Albany Commission who would not have the best interests of families and the future of the entire Finger Lakes region as a consequence. Also, I wish to appeal directly to all of our honored veterans. As you know, when we heard tonight regarding the Samson uh, Memorial, Veterans Memorial Cemetery, New York State is one of the few states in the United States that does not have an officially designated state veterans cemetery. So Seneca County needs your help. We are asking everyone to help honor the memory of the 530 souls that are buried at Samson Veterans Memorial Cemetery by calling or writing their local New York State Senator and Assembly member and ask them to pass legislation to designate Samson Veterans Memorial Cemetery located in Seneca County at the site of the former Naval Training Station and Samson Air Force Base as New York State's first officially designated State Veterans Memorial Cemetery. And I'd like to see this board consider that in, in future resolutions and uh, petition our, our state representatives to move forward on this. Thank you for your attention. Uh, County Manager remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I'll be brief on a couple uh, uplifting notes. We've had three graduates to obtain higher degrees through the DHS training funds. Ms. Tammy Smithers, Sandy Steele both achieved a uh, associate's degree from FLCC, and Ms. Amy Carino received her master's degree from Yucca College. And congratulations to those ladies. Absolutely, congratulations. Next, uh, County Attorney's remarks. Right. Nothing, nothing from the county attorney tonight, Mr. Chairman. Oh, you made it easy. Margaret, uh, communications. Communications 94 through 117 were received in oh, you. Okay, now I gotta flip over to uh, resolutions. Uh, let's see, number 14, Supervisor Trout. Supervisors award bids for aggregate materials. Court. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Uh, number 15, Supervisor Trout. Supervisors award bid for striping at county highways. Support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number 16, Supervisor Trout. Accepted from Raymond E. Kelly, repawking and resealing the exterior of the Senate County Office Building. Order. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number 17, Supervisor Trout. I would encourage everybody not to second this. The relevance of it is passed, but hiring senior water and sewer district operator. Second. 
Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, can I have Mr. Trout explain what he means by that? I was in contact with Sam Pretty um, last week. There was an interview process that needed to take place for a potential candidate for our water and sewer district. He uh, had mentioned to me that he would like to do the interview on Monday before our board meeting. Uh, during our last committee meeting, it was brought up and the committee had asked if Mr. Bronco, uh, water and sewer operator, could join that discussion with his knowledge of water and sewer and to make sure that we were hiring the right person. So they had that meeting yesterday. Uh, Mr. Bronco was present and this resolution is to put him into that meeting. So, like I said, a new point then. New point. Not, not really, because this board wasn't allowed to vote. So we're setting a precedent here. We're going down a slippery slope because if the committee passed it, if the county manager asked that it go to the full board, they already did the interview yesterday without the full board vote. So if you're gonna do it here and make exceptions to our rules that we have, heaven knows how many other times that's gonna happen. Because Mr. Bronca, the, the interview should not have been until after tonight's board vote. Even though I was the one that wanted it, it's the whole point of following the rules of order, which weren't done. Okay, any other discussions? Yes, uh, Mr. Shifley. Uh, the precedent is for appointments of this level is done usually by the department heads. Yes. Uh, I think to go do otherwise would be diverging from policy. Um, I think that overrules any idea of any precedents that Mrs. Lorenzetti is pointing out, uh, in my opinion. Okay, any, anybody else? Supervisor Cronenweather. I just say the intent of the committee was to invite Mr. Bronska and, and that was fine. That happened. So. I agree, the intent of the committee, and I specifically said, does it have to go to a full board? And in the minutes, you will see, and I think some of you that were here will remember, it was a kind of a match, and um, actually a pissy match, and it was the county manager that wanted it to go to the full board. So for it not to come to you guys to vote on, that's not right. If you all want to sit back and figure out a way that you think it's right, that's fine, but it's not. Okay, now you have your chance to vote. All in favor? Yeah. Of the resolution? Yeah. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. An opinion of the chair, that motion fails. So he has number 18. Here we are, folks. Government plans. Well, we had the vote. Supervisor Brunel, number 18. I'm oh, sorry, excuse me. Supervisor eliminate one full-time planning trainer and create one full-time deputy director of emergency management position. Support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? This is a position that we've always had. We just haven't filled it in the past couple of years. So I think, uh, is that correct, Melissa? That's correct. Yeah, we're just refilling a position that I believe Melissa served in previously before you were elevated. Uh, being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number 19, Supervisor Kaiser. Award bids and authorize additional funding for design and construction of hangar space at Finger Lakes Regional Airport. Support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Supervisor Lott. I had asked in the committee meeting for some numbers, how much fuel was sold, if, was that gotten by any chance? John? Mr. Chairman, the short answer, sir, is no, it wasn't. And now that you mention it, I, I forgot. That's okay. I took my time Friday. It was going far, but I took my time anyhow. I went back to the airport, met with one of the county managers. I wanted to know Bill on out of it. He wasn't available that day. Uh, got some numbers, and the numbers do satisfy me that I will vote for this tonight, but I feel these numbers should be in front of us all the time. They have moved 
uh, for the first quarter in 2016, for the full year of 2016, they've moved 12,353 gallons of great air aviation fuel. But our jet fuel in that same period moved 23,518 gallons. And I also have a price that they got, and I don't know what their cost is to purchase those fuels. For 2017, the numbers are about the same, 12,282 and 21,753. So we are selling fuel. They also gave me a list from 331.18 until 525.18 of jets that have landed back there and presumably bought fuel. We had a total of 16 jets landed at the airport, which is about 15 and a half more than I thought was going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Lott, imagine how much that number could have been increased if we could get the runway extended a thousand feet that we've been discussing for the last couple of years. You're exactly right. And the, the people should know that Bonadent, Scepter, Angie's List, and I believe four jets came in with students that are going to probably go to Hobart William Smith. So we're getting a good broad range of jets. So I am pretty satisfied. There's also a plane sitting out over there that they would normally get $500 a month storage for if it was inside of a hangar. But until this hangar gets built, that plane has to sit outside, so we don't get that one. So just for your information. Thank you, Ralph, for, uh, for digging all the facts and figures out. Any other discussion? We have no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. And another thing on the airport that we need to definitely look into is we would have a lot more landings if we could get a rental car company out there because a lot of jets have refused to come in because there is no ability to rent a, a vehicle to leave the airport. So that ought to be on. Um, John, do you want to address that one? Yes, sir. We're currently working that enterprise fleet management as a contract that didn't quite meet the scrutiny of myself and the county in turn. But uh, I'm in contact with representation of the ETF time, and uh, it's expected we'll have a car in the short Good. Is, is there some uh, liability problems with insurance? The short of it is, EFM would like our staff to do all the administration as well as clear for safety reasons the use of the car. So, but well, that's not really practical, is it? Well, it's practical if it if it works in pursuit of additional revenue with enhanced sales of fuel. That's where the money is. Yeah, is fuel sales. So if we can get more patrons to come because we have a rental car. And our employees are, are tasked with just... Um, technically, sort of technically, anybody who works for us at the airport is a county employee. That's correct. So, so being paid. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, next, number 20. Uh, and I'm not sure who this is under. Waiver, waive local law requirements for Empire Farm Days. That, that would probably be me. It just didn't have my name there, so I wouldn't go say anything. All right, well, I'll bring it up. Okay, it says HRGO, well, that'd be Human Resources and Government Office. Well, I guess that'd be me. Um, yeah. You're keeping us guessing here, Margaret. I know, you're keeping us busy. We will waive the local law requirement for Empire Farm Days, which we have done every year for the last since it's been in Central Hall. There you go. Since it's been in somebody's park. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's passed. I've got 21 as well. Okay. Take right off. Hello. Uh, did we vote on the airport resolution? We were in discussion, Mr. Lyon. Yeah, we, we, did, we did before. Didn't we? No, we voted. Mr. Sh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we voted before I, I came back with the rental car question. Oh, okay. That threw me off. Thank you. Mr. if I go now on 21? Uh, go right ahead, Supervisor Davidson. Authorized exception to travel policy 101-149 for mileage reimbursement. 
support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? And as we discuss this before. Supervisor Lazar, do you want to explain this? As we've discussed this before, I think uh, I, I think it's okay. I'm going to vote yes, but I, I think we need we need to keep to this traffic policy because it, you know we know on a quarterly basis where our budget's at. I think it's important, but I will vote yes. Okay, Supervisor Davidson. Okay, now, uh, Greg, are you saying this because of the? Uh, Third, whereas three individuals are requesting exceptions to the policy by authorizing payments for their claim totaling uh, $1,243.64 that were not submitted within the time limit set forth in the policy. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. We need to stick, stick with the policy. I think we need to stick with the policy in the future, but I'm going to authorize it. But I think we need to take a, a strong measure that, that uh, you know, in the future, you know, you have to stick to the policy and submit these requests on time, period. And the start. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Margaret has pointed out that in the third whereas, the the amount of twelve hundred and forty three dollars is incorrect, and it should be the number that's in the resolve fourteen hundred and thirty dollars. So I. I, I don't think it makes much difference, but we should uh, right, right, uh, Supervisor Lawrence. Betty, we we gotta we gotta stay on task here. But I, I Supervisor Lazaro, there is no stick or any hammer, is there? Other than the fact that all you could do would be to refuse paying these, even though they're they're legitimate if they're not submitted in a timely manner. But there's a policy procedure, and I think it should be followed. But I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go along with this one. But in the future, but don't let it happen again. Huh? I, I, I we, we talked about that. We talked about this once last year also, and we asked people to stick to policy and procedure. You know, I worked for the state for for 34 years, and we have, we used to have to submit those on a monthly basis. And and if you didn't submit those on a monthly basis, they didn't get approved, and you didn't get paid for it. Period. End of story. So you learn. Put a, you, you put a clipboard on your dashboard every time you go someplace, boom. At the end of the quarter, you submit it, period. End of story. It's an easy process. You're driving through the county, you want to get reimbursed, and you submit it on time, period. I think that should be our future stance. Well, I think we've beaten that one pretty well. Is there any other discussions on that? If not, all in favor? Uh, opposed? Yeah, After all that, it's I've approved. Oh, uh, what did you do? You didn't answer? I abstain. You abstain. Oh, okay. Well, still in the opinion of the chair, that motion is passed. Number 22, Supervisor McGreevy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Contract with New York State Department of Health for Public Health Emergency Planning Grants. Support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion here? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's passed. No, nobody abstained on that, did they? Okay, uh, number 23, Supervisor McGreevy. The board approves appointment of Finger Lakes Workforce Investment Board member. Support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number 24, Supervisor McGreevy. Number 24, Supervisors approve Workforce Innovation and Opportunities Act contracts and administrative agreements with the Finger Lakes Workforce Investment Board for the period July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019. Support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion here? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Super, uh, number 25, Supervisor McGreevy. 
reclassified position for workforce development youth bureau typist to employment and training assistant. Support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? And no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number 26, Supervisor McGreevy. Number 26, board approves creation and filling one position for full-time addictions counselor for the mental health department in fiscal year 2018. Support. Motion made and second. I Any discussion? Like an amendment to that resolution. Supervisor McGreevy, offer your amendment. Be it further resolved, the finance department is authorized to make the following budget amendments, and I won't read that graph. Everyone should have that in front of you. That's everything in yellow there? Yes. Thank you. Any discussion? No. So I'll second the amendment. I have a dis I have a second on the amendment. On the amendment. All right. Any any further discussion? If not, all in favor of the amendment. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the amendment is passed. Now back to the original res resolution as amended. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's passed. Number 27, unfinished business. Okay, I have a, I have a uh, subset A, reclassified position for senior water and sewer district operator to water and sewer maintainer. That's on the table. That's on the table. Uh, does somebody wish to bring that off the table? That's what we need, correct? You need a motion to take I make that motion. Thank you. A second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor to bring this off the table? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Okay, it's back on the floor. What's your pleasure? John, you want to? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a brief discussion. Remember, this uh, this position was debated earlier right, as far as the interview process, and there is an applicant a likely hiring opportunity in the Division of Public Works for a senior water and sewer operator. And he has all the credentials. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any. Any further discussion? Yeah, I'll discuss. Okay. Uh, we have two applicants. There is a other applicant um, that has been interviewed a couple times. He wasn't called in for another specific interview um, that I'm aware of for this position. Yes, in fact, he did want more money than what the position pays, um, but he has a wealth of knowledge and he has worked the system under the direction and leadership of Jim Bronca. Um, he's actually run the system on weekends when Mr. Bronk has not been present. So we have a water district with three supervisors whose people reside in it, and we are not given an opinion. Um, my strong suggestion was that we go for the person with the more experience that can hit the, that will be able to go into this job and start from day one. We're going to have inexperience. Um, and we have quite a mess that we have in this water district. And if you don't think so, look at number 95, 96, and 97 of communications, plus many, many communications by many different people. Um, I just want my town of Fayette people to know that I tried my best. I think the decision has already been made. Um, for 10 grand more, we should have went with the more senior that could do the job and we would have all the confidence that it would be done correctly. I don't think that's going to happen, um, but I wanted to give it one last plug, and there it is, folks. We do have a huge problem with water sewer. Um, I was allowed to go in, and I spoke with um, Supervisor Trout and uh, County Chairman John Shepard. Um, we had back and forth dialogue that really did not amount to much as far as I'm concerned, except I do know there's a whiteboard in the county manager's office with priority list, and I did not see water and sewer on top of any of them. Well, actually, it wasn't even on the board. So that was my last plug, you guys, to the town of Fayette. I don't think that we're going to win, and there it is. Okay. Uh, other than an opinion, was there any 
No, it was discussion. Any motion there? Or? Mr. Sorry, Supervisor like, Trump. Like Every, everything that was just discussed or was just said by Ms. Lawrence Eddy, that's not what this motion is about. This motion is reclassifying the position. Yep. So if you wanted to hire the guy that you're talking about, you would vote no on this because we don't want to change the reclassification of the position. We want to leave it alone because we do have two candidates and one of them is the guy that you're talking about and then we have the other one. So we want, we want to vote no on this. That's, that's all. Or, or if I know that the guy that you've already got it, well, that's what it is. That's correct. That's correct. I have a feeling this will end up being the hand of the I was a counselor. The stain. The stain. The stain. You know what? I, I needed to get that out there. And I'm not going to executive session because I said it out in public. And I'm going to do because now they don't want to request. We want to keep it at what it's at. Well, it's already on the floor. It was second in place. What is that? It was brought back on the table. What is this? What is this? Uh, did I see Supervisor Kaiser's hand up over there? Yeah, it's like we have input. Uh, okay. I, I did initially support Mrs. Lorenzetti's opinion position on this hire, but after I invest, did some investigation on the particulars of the people and the situation, I shouldn't say not necessarily the people, the uh, salary that we would have to probably hire the more expensive person would put them probably more at an executive level where perhaps they could not be in the trench because uh, maybe our union would have problems with that possibly. Uh, we need somebody not only that's got the ability to administer the district, but we need somebody who can get out there, be in the trench, be out there working with the people, not in the office, not down here at the county building or wherever. So I think that uh, the districts are already strapped for cash, as we know. Uh, I think the option that was put on the table apparently from the committee that met Monday, yesterday, is uh, sufficient for what needs to be done. Excuse me, I just want to like... Wait a minute, yeah, I, I, I need, need to... Can do the hold on, Supervisor Lawrence. I, I haven't recognized you yet. I know. Back, back to Supervisor Kaiser. Dave, yep. so are you recommending that we vote for or against this? I'm recommending that we vote for this, reclassify the position, yes. To he says no, he says yes. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm certainly getting confused. There you go. I'm confused. Mr. Oh, Trout. Uh, Supervisor Trout, can, can, can you, you clarify this, this for us? Yes. Say no. And then we can hire the person we want to hire, whether it's Cindy's person or whether it's... Don't say Cindy's person. But <laughs> I, I, it's the better, it's the more experienced. I mean, that's or a it's fact. From Auburn. We need to leave the classification of the position alone. It has nothing to do with hiring the person right that's now. Correct. We I, just okay. the class. I understand. So just so I, I was more yeah. answering the opinion about the high, who who might be picked. Uh, thank you. Well, for that's the not part of the resolution. That so is, that's pure hearsay. That is correct. So and Supervisor I, Trout is recommending yeah. that we vote this yeah. motion down. And I, is there any other lower? And I appreciate Mr. Trout's clarification. Thank okay. You. There. Vote it down. All in favor? Say aye. All opposed? Nay. The opinion of the chair, the motion is defeated. Okay, now it's off the table. And voted down. Uh, new business, uh, number 28. Uh, somebody want to request a rule 29 for, for the next issue? I'll make that motion. Now, Mr. Chairman, if I can. This is oh, you certainly can. Well, I, I'm going to have to because this is an exception. When we speak of Rule 29, we're talking about bypassing committee. Appointment of officers is not required to go through committee, so there's no need for the two-thirds vote. This can be a simple up-and-down vote on the reappointment. So we don't do not need a Rule 29. 
Well, it is Rule 29, but it does not. The, the but we don't have to. We don't have to enact the Rule 29. Is that what you're advising? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Su Supervisor Davidson, you want to read the resolution for number 28? I'm very glad to read this resolution. Tiffany Polk appointed the elect election commission for a four-year term commencing January 1st, 2019. Order. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is passed. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, who's going to offer the uh, the uh, request for a Rule 29 for the Homeland Security Services grant? I will do that, Mr. Chairman. Oh, you're just full of them here tonight. Go ahead. <laughs> offer the Rule 29 first, please. Uh, we'd love to do a Rule 29 for this, uh, except in the 2018 New York State Division of Homeland Security. Is there a second on the Rule 29 request? Uh, Supervisor Hockendell, second day. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the Rule 29 passes the majority test. Read the resolution, please. Well, except the, new, the 2018 New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services Grant. For the reserve sport. Support. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's accepted. Okay, next. Uh, where are we at here? Another, the next Rule 29. Okay, that was, this is all part of that. Yeah, just carry over the next Yeah. It's almost confusing. I know. Uh, does somebody want to make a request for Rule 29 to authorize the application for the New York State Department of Transportation Aviation Capital Grant Program. So moved. Supervisor Kaiser, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Act? Motion made and seconded for Rule 29. For the purpose of this motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Read the motion, Supervisor Kaiser. Do I have to read the whole thing? All right. Well, until somebody second. Authorized application for New York State Department of Transportation, the Aviation Capital Grant Program. Second. Motion made and seconded. See, you were saved. <laughs> Any discussion? Being no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Uh, do we have any other business to come before this board? If not, I'll entertain a motion for the special order of the day. So moved. Thank you, Supervisor Kaiser. All in favor of the journey? Say aye. aye. Opposed? This meeting stands adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.